Welcome back to M Hood Fishing. I am in the woods on the east bank along the river. I don't know if something is dead in here or if it's just the smell of the mud exposed because the river has dropped since I was last over here. But let me tell you, there are several hundred turkey vultures all around us in these trees. There's a bunch up there, high roosting. Let's take a short walk, leave the bike where it is. I think we're close to where I want to fish, but I need to look at it. It's not going to look the same. Last time I was here, it was higher, right? So I have those shoes on. Oh, you hear that? They're everywhere. You hear the wings? Whoa. There's some flying right there one coming across here's that spot I've seen turkey vultures here before but not this many I have encountered this many in the area that we're in just not at this particular spot it is a great place for them they can roost so I caught what like a 37 pounder or something here last time I was here got it right out there now that water was up higher you see how this is exposed you couldn't see this drop right here but yeah this looks doable hmm you couldn't even see that stick last time let me tell you it is noisy in here with all these birds flying around here's a bunch right here at this spot I think we're just going to be encountering them throughout the whole session it is later in the afternoon let me pull my phone out and tell you the time because i don't know what it is i'm preoccupied with these numerous there's a bunch up there numerous numerous turkey vultures here's one close to us one up there i mean there are several hundred <laughs> along here right now enough turkey vulture hunting let's get to fishing maybe they're the reason it stinks sometimes when the river drops because it dropped fast when it drops fast like it did about over a foot to two feet somewhere around there it's the same thing when you go to a place at an extreme low tide you're going to smell all that mud and it's going to stink it's kind of what it smells like in here but it's got this weird like a little something else is thrown in that recipe right there and i think maybe it's these birds here we go you know they like carrying and stuff rotten flesh that's one of their wings one of their feathers the bike's not too far everybody's really concerned because of the river flooding up north it's kind of surreal that it's dropping fast down here and kind of rising up there it's supposed to i'm sure by the time you see this video it's crested because a crest is supposed to happen soon but yeah i won't see anything from that for a couple more weeks or more right now it is actually 223 and some people are like "Ooh, you're kind of over there late no I'm not but first before I explain why I'm here in the afternoon and not in the morning this is a size 6 Aberdeen because we're here so early like way before any major feeding cycle for fish begins we're gonna start out with a small piece of bait that is gill right there a piece of bluegill a chunk put it on that size six like that we got 50 pound mono for the leader four ounces of lead and 80 pound braid for the main line 10 foot Daiwa beef stick with a big old pin reel down there so this spot has good deep water and it's a big eddy if you look at this and slow down your observation you'll see current right close to us going this way and major current going that way that's because going down here that's downstream that's upstream so we have a bit of a backflow this is real strong current even for a four ounce lead so we are not going to put this out far we kind of limited in our casting ability because we're in the trees here last time i was here i didn't put it out far at all and I still got a really big cat out of here. The only cat I got out of here. I've fished this stretch many times 
over the past two years or so. So I only brought one rod because I know two rods can be chaotic, potentially chaotic. So we're just gonna do our best to not trim the trees. Boom! We're casting up river slightly, or I'm, I'm sorry, down river, but up current. That way, because it's gonna drift, that way when it drifts, it doesn't end up drifting too far. You see all this stuff right here? We do not want it to drift so far that it's running the line up against all that. So far, so good. We're still on a slow drift, but it's very slow. Let's engage my bait runner here. The ferry schedule changed recently this year. The latest that I, I can get over there, 10.15, it leaves the east bank to go back to the west bank. Of course, I'm not gonna be here that long. I'm here a lot earlier than I should be really, but hey, let's see what happens and where it goes. Oh, something crashed out there. I'm gonna go ahead and disengage the bait runner. Yeah, you're right. So even though it's dropped almost two feet since I've been here, I still expect to catch nice cats close in. We are not far out. We're in a decent depth of water, maybe 15, 20 feet. They're gonna be coming up in close to feed when they do because of the river shrimp. A lot of the people who actually come in here and fish, which aren't like tons of people, but there are people that come here. I think they've been using river shrimp lately because I've seen their traps and I've seen dead river shrimp on the bank where they've been fishing. And I know the river shrimp are running thick and it's gonna continue that way for a while. You know, you, you might be thinking, why aren't I fishing with river shrimp? Well, I'm just not. I have bait here, it will work. But we will do a river shrimp video soon. Look at this, we should do something. It took about 38 minutes or so. <clears throat> I was really tempted to bring this up and recast it, but I just sat there and waited. Feels like a decent cat, not gargantuan. We've got our first bit of traffic coming too. I can see it, it's gonna be a while before it gets in front of us. It's a barge, it's a towboat pushing a lot of barges. We'll see what kind of wake it throws up on us. This fish is almost in front of us. Oh, we got us a flatty too. Nice, this is a good area to find flathead because if you notice the bank where we're at is clay. It's not like that all along here, but there's a lot of clay deposits along here. You know, it's just a good place for them to make holes and stuff. There's a lot of structure here too. It's deep out there. These are really nice color too. Gotta be careful when you're fishing a wet clay bank like this, they can be slippery. This one's not too bad. I'm being careful, however. Let's see how easy that hook comes out. Ooh, like nothing. What a nice fish for the first fish. It's not huge, but yeah, that is awesome. Awesome. What a nice color you are. Here's what some people just don't like to see me do. Yeah, I know it's a nice keeper size flathead, but I'm not keeping fish. Nice. Got it out there further this time. Just missed that top branch up there that's hanging out. It's now 3.07. So yeah, a little over 30 minutes for the first fish. Maybe it'll just keep picking up. Sometimes, You'll get flatheads 
on a cut bait as long as it's fresh and this is cut bait i caught in yesterday's video so it's fresh oh geez i was on the phone and this hit out of that spot where i was like oh oh it's already beaver telling i had my head down texting someone and i, I just looked up and went oh oh oh, oh. Oh, 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 he's got a lot of fight. Whoa. Oh, beaver telling again. Oh, I gotta come this way. Oh, good grief. He's, yes, he turned. He's swimming in on us now. Oh, we gotta come this way to stop him. He's got beaver tail right there. Yes. Oh, come on, come on. Yes. That's why I came over here. Didn't come over here to keep fish. Came over here to catch big fish. Because that's usually what happens when I come over here. Sometimes it's just one. Like the last time I was at this spot. Other times it's a few. Well, I don't even care if this is like the only big one or if it's the last fish. I'm not planning on going anytime soon, but I am definitely not staying. We're, we're, we're not staying until the last ferry, that's for sure. This is definitely over 20 pounds. It's somewhere in the 30 pound range, I'm, I'm guessing right now. Let's see if we can... doing the no-no here we're grabbing the line it's 80 pound braid we just need to be careful that he doesn't take my fingers with him be real gentle you gotta get him turned around so i can put the fish grips on him yeah he's definitely somewhere in the high 20s or low 30s Come on, buddy. Gotcha. I did bring a landing net. However, I find it a lot easier to just use the fish grips in many situations. Yeah, let's see what, what he weighs. Oh, come on. Settle down. High 20s, 28.66, 28 pounds, we'll say. Not bad. I've caught even bigger along this stretch of the river over in these woods before. 28 pounds is a good fish for the day. But what will we do next? Because we're not going anywhere too soon. Well, I love it when they just head straight out to the river instead of going whoop, whoop, doing that U-turn. Right before I went to pick up that fish to release him, I thought I saw something move and I heard something deep in the trees over there. Pretty sure I saw something short on two feet. There may have been two of them. We are in the boundaries of the pig children. You gotta be careful sometimes. I'll tell you a story about that on the other channel soon. Fresh bait this time. And let me tell you something. If you're using a sand spike like that or anything like you see over here, there's just a aluminum pipe. I believe that's aluminum in the ground. Okay, so when you get a big fish like that, that really put a lot of tension on that. You'll see it's loose now. So we need to reset that because at the moment, we get another big fish and I'm texting somebody It'll shoot out like a bottle rocket so we're just gonna back it up that looks good another thing that I don't really talk about often is that when I put these in I tend to like to have an angle going back 
instead of going straight up and down or going forward i never like it to go at an angle going forward an angle going back let me show you why put that rod in there and i'm going to hold on to the line i'm going to pull the line out see how it's going straight up and down so if i had that straight up and down that wouldn't be a, that rod wouldn't be at a straight up and down angle it would be at a slight angle going forward because you see the front of the front of the bank stick here's the rod and you see down here the butt is at the bank at back of the bank stick or you know sand spike is what those are called will i get it in the tree this time only one way to find out oh just barely in the tree but you know we can get it out by doing that let's make sure we're good still we got out there a good distance we're in about the same area where we just caught that big one we'll see what we do now it is now 348 we just did that cast we got here around 220 something so not too bad i would have liked it to be a little better but hey it's not prime time so i would say that we've done good so far we've got two cats one at a decent weight 28 pounds i'm happy let's do another one it is now 4 35 that's been out there for roughly 30 minutes without anything no bite or anything so i'm gonna bring it in shoot it back out there different spot We're looking at an hour now without a bite. This maybe will give us a bite. It's definitely gonna give us a more substantial wake. Oh, something interesting just happened. We're almost at an hour and a half without a bite. And we just got a big slack line. oh yes look at it you see that action there oh man i'm tempted just to pick it up and see yes i don't have to do that because he's there oh wait a minute is he yes yes number three i was just about thinking about calling it because oh i want an early night i got up early this morning but i had stuff to do Oh, 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 no, no, oh, was that my fault? Did I act too fast? Dang, oh, oh man, it makes me not want to go. Yeah, we don't have any bait. I wonder if that was a gar instead of a cat. I'll tell you what, it is 524 now. I really was seriously thinking about jetting. I do want to have an early night, but we will give it another 30 minutes. How about that? Perfect. Missed the tree all together this time. Come on, number three. I see you. You guys see it? Let's step back a little bit. See that action on that rod tip? I'm just going to let him have it. Don't want to overreact. Well. There is something here. Let's go ahead and come down on them. Yep, we got them. That is cool, too, that we got this fish because we just had a bunch of traffic go by, but it is coming up on six when I want to go so I can have an early night as long as this one doesn't let go like the one before it did come on comply got this bait in a different place too it's more to the right so we've got some contention here we want to try to get this fish get his head turned coming down river because oh and yeah 
We just hit a brick wall. Nope, here we go. We just got it. Yeah, we got him. Ooh, I thought he was gonna get wrapped around that stuff you see right there, all the down trees in the water, the overhangs and whatever else is under the water there. We got him coming in now. As long as there's nothing crazy going on that I don't know about that he's about to wrap us around or go under. He's just about in front of me now. He's holding tight though. Ooh. Not a big fish. But man, he's got some spunk. Oh, he's not too small either. Yeah, there you go. I love coming to this stretch here. You usually hit nice size fish. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just to make it easier for me. I put the rod in the sand spike. Come down here and get him. He's not very big, but we are appreciative of you because you are the last one this afternoon. Whoa. Come on, comply. Comply, 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 come here. Yep, got him. That is a decent cat to call it on. All right, guys, we are not going to bother weighing this fish. He's 10 pounds 12 pounds something like that maybe a little less but a decent eater blue of course that's not his fate tonight he gets to go home and so do i yeah you're right oh there he goes it's all about the eddy if you can find a decent eddy that's not snaggy this time of year on the river, especially down here at 65 degrees, that's that's what the water temp should be for this to work. You find a good eddy, you're gonna find some good fish, probably even big ones. That's why I come to this spot and I will come back. But until then guys, thanks for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. I'll see you next time.